Good afternoon po, everyone. Uh, magsisimula na po tayo. Uh, pakitingnan po yung ating screen para po sa mga reminders. So, if a flash lang po na natin. And after the reminders, we will have our pre preliminaries. So, keep your audio on mute. Meron po tayong host na mag-unmute uh, po ng microphone uh, uh, during the Q&A. Uh, participants who wish to speak, ay kailangan hong mag-raise ng hand sa boto. Mapapansin po ninyo sa baba doon sa ibaba ng ating screen ay meron pong participants. So mamaya ako magdadagdagan yan. I-click nyo po yung participants. At doon, makikita nyo on the right side screen sa baba, merong raise hand. Ito. So yung raise hand, pag nakita ko ng ating facilitator na si Ms. Kat, uh, kayo po yung nakalinyang tatawagin mamaya. So please take note of that. Yung para ho, klaro sa atin mamaya at tuloy-tuloy po yung ating discussion. Alright, so sa mga pre preliminaries po, we can start. Uh, okay. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we enter this training hall, we bring your presence with us. We speak your peace, your grace, and your perfect order into the atmosphere of this session room. We acknowledge your Lordship over all that we be spoken, taught, decided, and accomplished within these walls. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gifts that you have given to each one of us. We do not take them lightly, but commit in using them responsibly and well. Give us a fresh supply of truth and beauty to which we draw our strength in doing our job. Anoint our creativity, our ideas, and our energy so that even our smallest tasks may bring you honor. Lord, when we're confused, guide us. When we're weary, energize us. Lord, when we're burned out, infuse us with the light of your Holy Spirit. May the work that we do and the way that we do bring hope, life, and courage to all that we come into contact with. And Lord, even in these days' most stressful moments, may we rest in you. In your strong and powerful name we pray. Amen. Cooperative Pledge As a Filipino, I am and I believe in the cooperative. Alone I am weak, but with others I am strong. So I commit myself to work, to cooperate, for all to be prosperous. Harmony, industry, I will value. Cooperative affairs, I will attend. Responsibilities, I will assume. The cooperative philosophy, 
I will leave you. One vision, one belief, one feeling in cooperativism. My life I pledge, so help me God. We'll continue. For the opening and welcome remarks, may we request our chairperson from the Philippine Cooperative Center, Dr. Ra uh, Gary Leonardo, para po sa ating opening and welcome remarks, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Edwin. Uh, magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Uh, sa ngalan ng Philippine Cooperative Center, I'd like to welcome you all and uh, thank you as well for taking part in this digital forum on the DTI DOLE Interim Guidelines on Workplace Prevention and Control of COVID-19. Um, we're not just aware, but we are actually experiencing some severe and totally unexpected impact uh, of this pandemic, no? not just in our respective communities, not just in our respective homes, but also in our respective places of work. Kaya PCC deemed it uh, very timely to host this uh, digital forum uh, para kung anuman ang ating matutuhan as to the prevention and the uh, control measures that we can apply uh, in our respective places of work ay baka mai-apply din natin in our respective homes and in our respective communities. So we invited or we actually touched base with uh, uh, an expert in the field of medicine to share with us this, uh, her invaluable insights on how we can prevent and control uh, COVID-19 in our workplace. No? So at this point, Siguro, allow me to introduce our um, honorable speaker this afternoon. As I said, she's an expert uh, in the field of medicine. Uh, she's, um, she used to be the former executive director of the Occupational Health and Safety Center. Uh, she then I naging assistant secretary ng DOLE for regional operations, labor standards, and special concerns cluster. And currently, she is the head of the Bureau of Working Conditions. So, ladies and gentlemen, fellow cooperators, let's all give a warm welcome to Doctora Maria Teresita Cocueco. Maria Teresita. Okay. Then mute ko lang sarili ko. Um, again, thank you, Chair Gary, for the very uh, warm introduction. And to all the participants, I think mostly the cooperatives uh, who are here with us in this Dole DTI webinar on the interim guidelines for the workplace prevention on COVID-19. So, um, start na ba tayo? Shall I go on now with, uh, with our... Um, uh, we, with the presentation, are we good? Okay. Can I ask yes. the secretary to share the slides, please? Yes, ma'am. We are. Uh, okay. Sharing it now. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so it it is true, and you mentioned all of you mentioned it earlier. Ngayon na nag-uumpisa no talaga tayo, nagbubukas na po ang mga uh, kumpanya, mga establishments on um, uh, uh, for work. These guidelines are 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 uh, were developed and of course to be complied with. Uh, these are the necessary guidelines to ensure that we are able to protect ourselves and that our workplaces will be safe from COVID-19. Uh, next slide, please. The events leading to, next slide, please, Po. The events leading to these guidelines, of course, 
was the presence of COVID-19. We, you knew, we knew that uh, we were already having this in the Philippines last January when there were cases. Then uh, because of the increase suddenly in the, in, uh, towards the end of February and in March, the declaration of a state of public health emergency was done. And uh, following that, we already started having all the uh, quarantine, started with the zone-wide uh, enhanced community quarantine in March. Then it went into, of course, the uh, Luzon-wide ECQ all the way until April 30. And by the time, uh, because of the responses from the quarantine, we also knew that, of course, um, although the health problem is still there, and like I would always stress during this talk, there is no cure, there is no vaccine which means to say we will still always be vulnerable, but there are ways to protect ourselves. Now, uh, towards uh, as we were starting to lift the ECQ, the Interagency Task Force on Emerging, Emerging Infectious Diseases already asked the different government agencies and their sec uh, that to provide directions for uh, complying with how we will be able to uh, provide you know the, the regulations the minimum public health standards that must be followed for the file for all the sectors and of course labor together with DTI we have to look into the industry sector next please um, these guidelines are there to assist private in institutions because for the DOL and the DTI our jurisdiction really would be on the private sector on uh, public health and the minimum public health standards that should be uh, present to operate during the ECQ and GCQ. And it will apply to all workplaces and to all employers and workers, as I mentioned, in the private sector. Again, I will always stress, when these standards were being developed, we also, of course, had to align this with what is what the DOH has issued in terms of the minimum public health standards. And this was just um, uh, tweaked or it was made specific so that it would be um, relevant to the companies and to industry. Next, please. So the main strategies that you see in the uh, pu minimum public health standard of the OH is, of course, what you will also see in the DOLE DTI guidelines. And this is looking at four major strategies, the increasing physical and mental resilience, which means, you know, uh, we should really be taking care of ourselves. Our resistance, our uh, having a good immune system is really one of our weapons in the fight Against, COVID, against the fight against this virus. Then, of course, if we now look at our workplaces, what are the strategies to reduce transmission of COVID-19? How will we minimize the contacts? If there would be, and uh, what we do not like is that there would be any infectious person that may be present because we want that they should be managed properly and that they should not anywhere be reporting for work. And it is also looking at the risk Reducing the risk of infection from COVID-19. Next, please. So look, discussing each strategy one by one on increasing physical and mental resilience, as I mentioned earlier, it's really our um, behavior, our attitude, our practice towards being healthy so that we will have a very good immune system. And COVID-19 or not, or any disease, we our, our body will be able to respond properly to fight against any disease. So this is looking at our diet. Like we will always, uh, uh, of course, promote nutritious and well-cooked food, drinking plenty of fluids and avoiding alcoholic beverages, especially at this time where uh, liver problems can also be, uh, can, can aggravate COVID-19 having adequate rest and at least eight hours of sleep. This is very important so that our defense mechanisms in the body will be renewed and we will be, and we will be able to have a very good immune system. And of course, and we know that if we regularly exercise, we also build up stamina, 
we build up our strength. Again, we are building up our immunity. Now, we, in order to have that uh, physical resilience, if companies can provide additional, what we first want to would be the vitamins because yes. it has been proven that vitamin C and zinc are really very good immune, immune boosters. These are, we would encourage companies to do this if they can provide it for their workers um, and other medicines that also, of course, may, may help if there are any medical conditions that arise. And uh, because we know that there is the mental health uh, concerns with COVID-19, you know, the fear, the anxiety, and even the depression that arises because of this disease, it is there. And it is really something that we have to deal with. You will, we, at, at this point, we, you know, as well as I do, there were workers who are so scared. You know, I'm not going to say, make, ako mismo ho, nung I mean, of course, nandyan pa rin yon, pero paano ho ba? Paano ba natin ma-assure sa ating mga manggagawa na safe na yung trabaho at pwede silang bumalik. But again, because they will always have that, that anxiety, it would, if there would be a uh, need for counseling, then at least have a referral system present. Next, please. Now, uh, we are now talking of the second strategy. How will we reduce transmission of COVID-19? We are looking at it through, again, several other ways. The first is, kung may sakit, ito talaga na, ang parati namin sa sabihin, ulit-ulitin na ho namin, kung hindi maganda kong pakiramdam, huwag na kong pilitin pumasok. Huwag talagang, kumonsulta na lang, kung sasabihin niyo, eh, pakailangan pumunta sa klinik. Ang alam naman ho natin ngayon, talagang nagiging um, ma malaking ano, uh, tulong itong tinatawag na telemedicine, teleconsult, kung meron ho kayo, nandun naman ho, kung walang pinaprovide ng company, you can, there are, uh, even in, in the local governments, there are numbers, there are hotline, even the DOH has its hotline. So, kung hindi na ho maganda ang pakiramdam, huwag yun na ho pilitin, magkonsulta mag online, pwede sa telepono, talagang yan na ho ay isa sa mga uh, nangyayari na ngayon. Now, kasi, ang, ang gusto kasi natin, hindi, hindi, Ito yung reducing, huwag na hong manghawa o huwag na hong, uh, uh, huwag na hong magkakaroon ng pagkakataon na ang, mga, ang, ang isang may sakit, COVID-19 o hindi, ay makahawa pa sa iba. So, okay, after having said na hindi huwag na hong nalang pumasok, pero yung mga iba, yung maganda naman ang pakiramdam, ito naman ho ang dapat din talaga natin gawin bago pa pumasok, importante ho na ho na magmask. Uh, kamakailan lang ho, nakita ko na rin na maski sa sasakyan, kailangan talaga magmask at may fine. Even if you're in any vehicle, you have to wear your mask at all times. Even in the companies, yan ho yung sinasabi natin. If um, possible, you just take it off when you know you're by yourself or, uh, um, or when you eat, of course. But then, it is very important that when you talk to people, wear the mask. You, it is very important that this has to be worn at all times. Um, ang sinasabi din ng ano, cloth masks would be, uh, are already okay. Now, aside, now, as soon as you enter the company, may daily questionnaire. Importante po ito kasi ito ho yung magbibigay ng mga ng alarm. It's going to help the company assess na, uy, may nararamdaman siya. Even if you feel you're okay, pero kung magsas uh, sasabihin nyo naman no doon. Kasi mga simptomas yan eh. Kung may ubo, sipon, lagnat. Kasi yun ho yung mga magbibigay ng, uh, ng mga pamamaraan na kailangan mong magpasuri pa. At hindi, dahil doon, kailangan hong hindi ka muna pumasok para matingnan ano ho ba talaga ang kadahilan na ng mga simptomas na to. Nandun din o, oh, hindi lang health na ito, pati kung kayo ay may exposure to someone with COVID or, sim or with COVID-like symptoms. Again, because we are trying to, uh, re of course, reduce this transmission, these are very important. Araw-araw ho yan, kasi tanatanong, eh, paano lang ho yan? Uh, kung ang daming empleyado, mag, talagang 
magpupunuan ho yun sa labas. Ang sinasabi naman ho namin, kunin nyo na, bigay nyo na ho yung mga forms na pwede naman online, pwede na rin ho nilang isubmit yan online, pero magpa-flag ho dapat yan na kung may sagot na yes, kailangan itabi at kailangan ma-assess. Kasabay ho nito kasi ang temperature check. Pag sinamit nyo ho yan, isusulat nyo na rin ho kung anong temperatura ninyo. Ito ho ay talagang kailangan na hong gawin. So, hindi to option. Before entering a workplace, you should have your temperature check. And because you came from outside, tapos ito nagdi-disinfect tayo, kaya spraying alcohol to your hands. And then, if there is a foot bath, then these are also, uh, these, these are of course recommended. Next, please. Alam naman, yun, ito naman sa um, uh, transportation vehicles, kung meron hong shuttle services, kasi marami hong sumasakay doon, o di kaya company, um, uh, yung um, cargo vehicles, then it would be very important and it should be done that these vehicles should be disinfected regularly before yung mga shuttle services, even before um, there are, will be passengers to ride, once the passengers um, go down, again, it should be disinfected. And in the afternoon, before they ride again, that regular disinfection is very important together with their cargo vehicles. Now, because there would be, if there would be the queuing outside the office, always remember that it ang, ang very important dito ang physical distancing. Alam mo, dito pa lang sa umpisa, meron na tatlong, there are three key messages of the public of the minimum public health standards. And here we talk of the mask, we talk of uh, physical distancing, and we talk of frequent disinfection. Let's go now to the next slide so that we can further uh, detail this. So disinfection, now you're inside the workplace. What is, um, what, it's not recommended what should be done. It's that if you have frequently handled objects, yung high touch, Yung mga doorknobs or depende kung anong pang ano nyo hawak sa mga doors, railways, uh, uh, railings ng stairs, even the even uh, your tables, they should be regularly disinfected at least once every two hours. And um, if, because we will always advocate now for frequent hand washing, having toilets with clean water and soap is very important. We really, because... Um, this is, dito naman ho nanggagaling ang, kung uh, meron ho kayong nahawakan na mikrobyo. COVID-19 o hindi, o balik, kung COVID-19 ho, may nahawakan ho kayo, o may naghatsing, o may ano, pumas, yan ang, pagpa, ang, ang pamamaraan ho na para pumasok itong virus sa atin ay sa ilong, sa bibig, at sa mata. So, kung hinuhugasan natin parati yung kamay natin, yan ho ang mag avoid na may virus na papasok sa katawan natin. So, encouraging workers to frequently wash their hands. And if it's, um, uh, if you're out of the office, have that uh, alcohol or hand sanitizers always there so that you can always disinfect your hands. These, your hands are really your, the, the, the means where these viruses can enter our body. And that is what we should uh, guard again. So we should just always wash our hands. Now, for we also then encourage that sanitizers are put in corridors, conference areas, elevators, stairways, where most of the workers pass. This is just going to encourage them to always clean their hands and sanitize. Next, please. And the other ways of trans reducing transmission, the physical distancing. You, you Later, you will see the layout of offices, there should be a physical distancing of at the minimum. Minimum na po ito, ha? Hindi to maximum. One meter radius space front, side, and back. If it will be more, that is better. Ang sinasabi na nga ho ngayon ng um, after, uh, the Centers for Disease Control, depende rin kasi the, the one meter is uh, can be applicable if you're if there's not much people, but then what they're saying now is six feet would even be better. But what we have here is at least one meter. So you will put in more, uh, more distance, then that would be better. Now looking at eating, and that's when, again, I will 
nasabi ko na nga po na syempre pagkakain kayo doon yung ibababa yung mask. Ang mahirap po dito pag nagbaba na yung mask, alam naman ho natin na ay, ewan ko, by this time, ewan ko kung marami na ako yung sa inyo ang nakatanggap yung tinatawag na viral load or the viral virus particle, how much virus particles will be uh, will be rem, uh, are, 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 um, rem, are excreted or uh, secreted from breathing, from talking, from sneezing. That is why this is, you know, when that goes down and then all the secretions are out, that is where also transmission can happen. So what we're saying here is, kyo kung ang dating, uh, pag, you know, kung kumakain ho tayo ay tabi-tabi at magkukwentuhan pa, medyo hindi na po muna, uh, hindi ho to advisable ngayon. Dahil, yun nga ho, wala na ho kayong mask, wala na ho yung barrier. Let's just eat after and after eating, uh, disinfect your plate, clean your hands, then put back your mask. So, uh, if you have, if there's no individual area for you to eat in your offices, then if you have to eat in canteens, then make sure that physical distancing is still um, observed in these canteens, like one person per table, and uh, it should be, of course, with physical distancing space. And we also, uh, it is also, uh, it should be followed that all um, utensils, all the uh, tables and chairs in the canteen sh should also be disinfected regularly, together with, of course, all the equipment or appliances in the canteens. Next, please. Now, looking at Ang ayo ho natin, so let's, that was transmission. Yung contact between a person who may possibly be a carrier or not, or, you know, because there are people now at work, what we are trying to avoid is that exposure to persons whom possibly. How can we minimize this then? Of course, you know, you're dreading. Nandun na nga ho, it's kanina yung reducing the transmission, they will not go to work. But just in case, uh, you know, more people would mean the, you will also increase your risk. So how can we lessen the people at work? Then that is looking at alternative work arrangements or yung shift work or staggered work hours or end work from home. These are all mechanisms that should be done so that there will be less people at work and it will also help in the layout for physical distancing. So uh, ang mga work from home is highly encouraged. If it can really be done at home, then that would be the best. That would um, that would allow for more spaces for physical distancing. That would also allow for less contact between people. Now, we also discourage prolonged face-to-face -face interaction. If it's going to happen, there should be masks that should be worn by both. There's, if there are meetings, kung sino lang yung importante nandon, yan yung at the minimum, it, they should be present and of short duration. What is short duration? Uh, mang, they're already saying that um, with masks on, at, uh, 15 minutes would be the longest. If it would take any longer, then try, um, we would advocate that you use Zoom, other video conferencing. We are all, uh, we know, we all know how to use this anyway, and this should be used um, optimally because we would really like lesser duration for the meetings. Next, please. Face to face. Next, please. The again, uh, going back to physical distancing. Let's look at the layout. Sabi po natin, may one meter dis, uh, um, distance between tables. Uh, but you know, if there are so many people, what we can say is, you know, staggered work hours. Para in between yung iba yung work hours ng katabi mo, para hindi kayo magtabe at yan yung mga pamamaraan para may physical distancing. And in any workstation or in, um, we would like a one-way type of movement that would avoid face-to-face, -face, diba? If you have a corridor na, ito lang, it will just go to, uh, everybody, everybody will go to the right here, the next corridor, to the left, that would avoid face-to-face um, -face contact. But we know that sometimes our work, our offices are not that big and ha would not have that kind of um, space to have this. 
So, kung talagang um, yung yung corridor ay kaila ay, uh, it will be necessary for two ways have a center line that would divide so that one on on one side the right side would only be to one direction and the left side would only be to the other direction and in enclosed spaces like the elevators again physical distancing actually the office is one enclosed space so that's why the offices should also comply with physical distancing next please and then the same like in the corridors if there are stairs kung dalawang hagdanan po yan yung isa ay para sa mga taong paakyat yung kabila ay para sa mga taong pababa pero kung hindi naman ano uh, if it's not feasible nor practical then you might like to see put like as my, uh, shown here in the picture uh, a center tape and again the one side Right, one side to go up, the uh, the opposite side to go down, and if there would be need of, if previously mga frontline um, uh, face to face assistance, we are really highly encouraging the use of technology so that you will avoid that physical contact. The online system is already very good. You know, we already have very good online systems. And you can also respond to the need of the clients through these means. And um, to implement all of this, after the guideline says it's a roving officer. However, of course, an example of a roving officer would be a safety officer. Next, please. Now, reducing the risk of infection Mas ginawa na ho natin lahat ng pamamaraan at may pumasok pa kasi maganda naman ang pakiramdam niya. Wala siyang, hindi wala siyang um, lagnat nung pumasok siya. E sa gitna ng, uh, ng work or sa, in, in the middle of the day, biglang nakaramdam siya ng um, kakaiba, biglang sumakit or na, nilagnat. Ano ang mga dapat niyang gawin? So the, it to yung una pa lang um, di ba sinabi ko uh, before entry kung may magyes meron ho talagang itatabi nyo actually we were already talking of an isolation area now if a person here would also start not feeling well he should go to that isolation area as well ang isolation area is really would um, uh, look at an isolation area that is not the clinic Kasi ang clinic ko, pinupuntahan niya ng maraming workers kasi yung mga masakit ang ulo, doon ho pumupunta at nandun yung... Ang, pag may, may biglang hindi maganda ang pakiramdam, itong isolation area na, so, uh, and we say that this should be within the entrance, pupuntahan na lang ho siya. At yung pupunta sa kanya, yung clinic personnel attending to that worker should be in full PPEs because he really does not know kung ano naman itong nararamdaman itong worker. At kung may possibility na COVID, eh dapat ho nalagang protektado po siya. Now, if uh, there would be need for testing because this is, it really seems to be or uh, there would be COVID-like symptoms, what we're saying here is that we really would advocate for the PCR type of test. Next, please. But then, okay, next please. Kasi, uh, ito na yung protocol then. Um, actually, uh, uh, um, the transport of these workers, dapat may protocol na po yan. Uh, either nakarefer na po yan sa isang healthcare facility, uh, susundin na ho na yan ambulansya. At pag COVID naman po yan, eh, nandun na ho yung mga protocols na susundan. Kasi, uh, ma-inform na ho yung DOH, Tapos yung mga contact tracing ay dapat umpisahan na. Now, because of that uh, case that could have happened in the workplace, there should then be the contamination of the workplace. How far, what is the extent? Saan ba ho itong galing, nanggaling itong worker na to? But if he has moved around, maybe really you might talk of the, the contamination or disinfection of the whole building. However, once disinfected, it's only really 24 hours that you wait, then they can all, then everyone can then go back to work. Now, yung close contacts of these workers, if these are workers who, you know, they had, they, they work in a, in an area, um, in a close contact area, sila rin po ay dapat mag 14 days home quarantine after a worker has presented with symptoms. If he tests negative, we continue to say it's still best that they should go on 14 days home quarantine. Um, may mga protocols na rin ho ito. The health officer, 
kung meron sa kumpanya, kung wala ho ang sinasabi na, lalo na pag sinasabi, eh paano yung uh, micro and small? Wala naman yung clinic, oh. ni, ni walang doktor, pati nurse, pero may safety officer ho yan. Pero ang sinasabi ho natin, ang local government, ang barangay, at this time, magaling na po sila. Alam na ho nila kung saan nila i-refer. Ire at kung kailangan mang quarantine, alam na ho ng barangay kung saan yung pinakamalapit na quarantine area. Because the local government units have really prepared for this because they are really trying to uh, contain all of these cases so that it will not spread. Next, please. Now, uh, kung may sakit pa rin naman po at hindi naman COVID, marami naman ho kasi talagang dahilan na pwede magkasakit, uh, ang sinasabi pa rin ho naman natin ay please stay home, take, re be, uh, take adequate rest, drink plenty of fluids, Again, for personal hygiene to prevent the spread of the disease. And even at home, please take care na hindi rin ho kayo manghahawa, maski hindi po to COVID. Next, please. And seek further care if then you would have persistent, to, yung tumatagal na po yung lagnat. At ito yung importante, kung bigla nahirapan kayong huminga o biglang nagkaroon kayo ng weakness, then it is very important that you should seek medical consultation. Next, please. Now, looking at the duties of the employers, we would like that there are company policies that they set and discuss with you. Kasi ito ho, mga polisiya dito ay makakapagbigay kaalaman din sa workers kung ano ina-expect sa kanya. Alam nyo ho na gumagamit sila ng mas parate. Kasi may safety office nga ho na monitor. Pero wala man kayong paris, biglang masabihan kayo ng worker na hindi ko naman alam na dapat sinusuot yan, you know, especially uh, pag, even if they're out of their, their cubicle. So these are very important policies and including in, included in these policies would be, you know, that they, they regularly disin, they regular di, disinfect uh, their work areas and that there is um, informa an information system that is being given to them that comes from a reliable source. Now, all materials and resources for the prevention of COVID-19 should be provided for by the employers. And this is looking at the masks to be used, the soap, the disinfectants, the PPE. And later on, you will see this if a testing will, may, it, it's a may here, but if it's going to be done, it should be the employer who should be responsible for the test. They should also, employer should also designate a safety officer to monitor these COVID-19 prevention and control measures. Next, please. For the, and then um, again for the employers, kung kaya pa naman ho talaga magdagdag pa sa mga health cards and the health insurance, it is going to be a very good uh, um, part on the employer. Uh, if com complications from COVID-19 can really drain uh, even if the field health has already provided for complicated cases i think all the way to 750,000 we hear stories that sometimes the bills do run up to a million and that is because of all of the life saving equipment that are being used so if they can provide for more of this health insurance for their workers that would be a very welcome gesture now, shuttle services, nako, ito po talaga ho, ang pinakaparatit na natanong. Kasi nung nagbukas sa GCQ at nag-allow na rin ng work, ang mahirap naman daw ho ay yung transport. Totoo ho yan kasi pag, uh, alam naman ho natin na pag nagbukas ang talagang uh, kailangan ng transport services, pero ang mahirap ho dito, uh, pag magtabi-tabay ho yan, hindi parang hindi na rin ho natin nagawa ng physical distancing. So it is really um, limiting pas uh, passenger capacity. But again, if the, that's why we were telling uh, employers, kung gusto mo nandun yung mga workers, provide that shuttle services to bring them there. Otherwise, it's really, it, you, everybody feels that it is very difficult because not all public uh, vehicle transport is open. And those who are allowed also have to limit their passenger capacity. So shuttle services, or if they can provide decent accommodation near their place of work, then that would be very good. And uh, is it, uh, should they be doing this? 
no ECQ, yes, they had to because there's really no transport. But in the GCQ, we encourage them. Po. Otherwise, they would really they, they should not um, they should not fault the workers if they come in late because there is no uh, the transport really at this time is very limited. Now we also another mechanism so that the workers will not have to. Uh, use transport vehicles, it would be hiring from the local community. And on the last, the COVID-19 hotline and call center is uh, it's going to be needed so that your workers will not physically present. Sick workers can call or those who are very anxious can have an access to a hotline that can respond to whatever questions they may ask. Next, please. For the workers, again, we will always stress Please comply with all preventive measures. It is there, the mask, distancing, disinfection. If you have to cough or sneeze and you don't, uh, just, you know, if you have a mask that's already there, but then what we're saying with a mask actually is to have a tissue in, inside so that kung biglang nabahin kayo, itatapo niya ng proper disposal. But again, for the mask, because it's reusable, please wash those masks every day so that, you know, of course it will avoid uh, if there are, inf you know, contaminations there, then it will clean them off. So uh, regular disinfection, the mask and physical distancing. Next, please. On the testing, because there is, of what we're saying here, there are two types of tests. The employers may test for their workers. The latest issue ones by the DOH, and I think it came out just a few days ago, is that um, uh, there are really limitations to both, more so with a rapid test. Because if you test positive on a rapid test, uh, you will still have to have yourself, then you would have to have a swab test the RT-PCR to be done because that is your gold standard to say that yes, it truly is uh, COVID-19. Marami na ho kasi nag-positive sa swab na nag-negative sa PCR. So it is required that, um, and ko alam nyo tong rapid test, may dalawa hong parang antibodies na naka-ano doon. So kung IgG at Ig, that's why ang sinasabi ho natin, kailangan ho may doktor na nagsusupervise kung ito yung gagamitin nyo. And ang test, ang limitasyon din dito sa mga test na to ay para sa panahon lang na yan. Hindi porket nag-test ka ng negative ngayon eh hindi ka na magka-COVID-19 ever. Depende nga ho kasi kung kayo ay biglang na-expose at kayo ay nahawa, uh, in that, then you might really, again, you know that you might have then, uh, you might be affected then with COVID-19. So for that time that you are tested, even if it's negative, Please do not assume that you will always be negative. What we are saying is how always think that in um, uh, in the in in going to work or in interacting with others, there might be a possibility for contamination. So we really just have to protect ourselves the best way we can. Next, please. And finally, yes, uh, again. Uh, the DOL and the DTI will always provide the technical support that is needed. And um, the, there should be a reporting that is given to the DOLE. And it is already online, our work accident injuries report. Um, if you, uh, kasi may mga tanong ho dito, paano hindi, kung hindi mag ano, kung hindi sumunod ang kumpanya. Alam niyo ho, gum, kasama ho dito yung ang um, tinatawag na uh, monitoring team ng DOLE at DTI. Nag-start na ito sa mga regions, may tinitignan na po sila ng mga kumpanya on the on its compliance to this DOLE DTI guidelines. Ano, may, may nakita kong tanong, may penalty ho ba? As much as possible, at hindi nyo makikita dito, wala nga ho kami sinulat na penalty, pero hindi ibig sabihin no, na ayaw ko mag-comply, di okay na hindi ho. May Oslo ho tayo, may safety and health law na nandun ang penalty. Kung may willful violation, doon na ho natin gagamitin yan. And sa LGU, pwede rin ho silang pumasok at sabihin, yung bayanihan law has penalties. So they can also use that as well. So what we're saying here is, let us help each other. Really, prevention is the best way to go. We do not have a cure. We do not have a vaccine. 
So it's really protecting ourselves, protecting our workplace so that it is safe. And when we, our workers go to work, they're assured that they will not have COVID-19. Next slide, please. And I think the last two slides will not top off. This one is um, our sample protocol on the temperature check. When do we say, oops, you see the yellow, the yellow, um, the yellow. yellow rectangle, the 37.5, this is where we say, uh, dito ka muna, tingnan natin kung tataas o bumaba kasi lower than that, you're free to enter. Higher than that, then you cannot enter at all. Yung 37.5 kasi galing sa labas, baka mainit talaga, kaya medyo mat, um, tumaas ng bahagya ang kanyang temperatura. Pero pag nagpahinga, ay bababa na po sa normal. So okay na po siya. As long as, the next slide please, itong questionnaire, itong isang sample ng questionnaire, yes, next slide po, ay walang yes na, 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 na sinagot. Pag may yes po yan, dapat i-evaluate po. There's a second part, ito yung mga symptoms. On the second part, ito naman yung exposure because of travel or exposure because of contact. So that's in the next slide. And yun ho. So this is uh, the last slide, I mean for the presentation. But if you have questions, next slide please. Next slide po. Ah, anyway, it is really saying a thank you to all. So, yun po ang Dole DTI guidelines. Uh, you know, I can stop there so that if there are any questions. Ah, gusto nyo na ituloy yan. <laughs> okay. Konti na lang naman po ito. These are... The, <laughs> these are... Gusto mo question na o ituloy na natin to? Uh, Chair Edwin. Uh, Ma'am Asek, pwede ko siguro discuss nyo muna ito na mabilis. Oh, sige, uh, mabilis nila. Oo. Okay. Actually, oo, marami naman ho ito. Nabanggit na ho natin. So next slide, please. Yung, I'll just touch yung, yung medyo kailangan um, ma, ma, ma detalye po dito. So it's there. Reduce na, na pag-usapan na natin yan. Reduce the number of people. We also reduce the need to travel because when they travel, marami ho silang makakasalamuhang iba. At yan ho naman ay additional contact na pwede ho mapanggalingan ng sakit. And that they should be work from home, especially for those who are the high risk. I think we missed that. Um, I, 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 anyway, sino ang high risk? Those above 60, those below 21, and those with comorbidities. Yung comorbidities na tinatawag, yung may mga uh, sakit um, uh, or pre-existing illness. As you may know, yung mga may high blood, diabetes, o galing sa sakit ng cancer, uh, other immunocompromised individuals, those are high risk. But, you know, even if they're well, but do you know that their tasks can be done at home? Kasi marami na ho yan, lalo na sa BPO, then we really encourage this. This will really avoid the need for travel. Next, please. Ayan, uh, yeah, I already showed that, the high risk. And... Um, they should also, employers should make available social support to facilitate quarantine compliance. Kasi, di ba nabanggit ko ho kanina yung, uh, if somebody gets sick, sick na talaga ho yan, eh, talagang uh, he will have to undergo. But if, if that person, but that then, okay, a person who's sick will have to go, will really have man, medical management. Now, yung mga na, yung sasabi namin close contact, that would have to do quarantine, um, home quarantine or self-imposed quarantine of 14 days. We, they encouraging that they should also have this po policy so that they can call it like compassionate leaves so that it will not really be taken off because hindi naman nila kagustuhan yung nangyari. And uh, these are very, you know, th this would be very good for, the co-workers. But for those on sick leave, we of course would encourage that they can still have further medical insurance coverage and I already mentioned that earlier. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, do you know that for the establishment, screen returning employees for flu-like symptoms. Returning because this is now, you know, the return to work after the, after our ECQ. 
the temperature check, temperature check, and the disinfection of these persons who come in or even outbound, but the disinfection will be done if they take shuttle services. Other non-pharmacologic -pharmalo intervention, I already did. Ang, ang non-pharmacologic, ibig lang kung sabihin nito, ay hindi gamot. So ano pa yung mga pwede natin gawin, gam, gamin, gawin na uh, uh, liban sa gamot, na iinumin, eh, ano, itong, ano mga pamamaraan? So regular hand washing, hygiene, disinfection, cleaning your environment, physical distancing, health education, and of course, Again, here, they return to um, work guidelines of the OH. They indicated that all measures in the DTI DOLE guidelines. Next, please. Okay. Importante hong entindihin na ang say, kasi prevention ho talaga eh. We have no cure, we have no vaccine, so prevention. And when we talk of workplace prevention, nandun ho talaga yung safety and health. And we look at these controls. It's a hierarchy. The top being the most effective in that tao, engineering. Kasi sa source pa lang tinatanggal mo. So what are these engineering controls? Eh di unang-una, paano tinatanggal ang mikrobyo? Hand wash. Regular disinfection of surfaces. Siyempre, mawawala yan. You're removing it. It's being eliminated. What else? What other engineering controls? The barriers so that it is not transmitted, it, uh, you're reducing the exposure. Ang importante ho dito, now that we talk of safety and health, uh, is exposure, how is one exposed, and what is the risk? So, kung nag-iisa ho kayo, at wala naman kayo nararamdaman, okay lang kayo. Pero kung may iba na hong pumapasok sa space nyo, and pwede hong panggalingan niya ng sakit, uh, nandun na ho talaga ang barriers, and because you're not sure, you just have to regularly disinfect and wash your hands and clean the workplace. Engineering, what other barriers? Naku, makikita nyo na ho ngayon, di ba? I was so surprised at 7-Eleven, may mga plastic na pala between the cashier and the, and, the, and the customer. These are barriers, that's engineering. So that kung magsalita, kasi magsasalita ho, sasabihin niya, ito ho, big, ano yun, ito yung, ito yung cost. Uh, again, the engineering controls. Administrative and work practice controls are what are um, uh, what are office procedures. So, ito na yung work from home, ito na yung staggered work, ito yung physical distancing. Kasi these are administrative procedures that are by policies that should be enforced. Finally, PPEs, the mask. But if you are in the healthcare setting, ibahon na talaga ang PPE. The full PPE should be there. Kasi yan ho talaga ang protection nila laban dito sa virus na ito. Next, please. Uh, ito na yung examples, and I already mentioned this earlier. Uh, additional sa administrative, the referral network. So, they're all there. Next, please. Uh, additional administrative controls. Um, the, again, it was mentioned the DOLA DTI guidelines, cough etiquette, hand hygiene, and um, the, the, the DOH administrative order, yun naman ho ang mother document ng pub, minimum public health standards. Nandun yung apat na strategy na nabanggit ko. So again, uh, that is where it came from. And of course, the PPEs, the face shields, and masks. This is for regular work in the office po, ha? Because... In healthcare, it's a totally different ball game. Next, please. Now, um, what do we want? Uh, what should be done for screening? I mentioned that the uh, temperature check, the symptoms, and the history of travel and exposure. Yeah, for, for, of the last fourteen days. That's very important. Hindi yung last two days. It's the last fourteen days. Kasi yan yung incubation po ng COVID nineteen. And exposure is defined as there is that incident that happened either two days before the screening or 14 days before from the onset of symptoms of a confirmed or probable case. Because you are looking at exposure to, as to symptoms or to cases. Next, please. Now, uh, this is a note. This is just a graphic illustration. And what is... Uh, how do we define exposure? 
if there is a face-to-face -face contact with a confirmed case, confirmed, so COVID positive siya, and there is face-to-face -face contact within one meter for more than 15 minutes. That's why we were saying, I was saying earlier, if you have, if you have mean, meetings, let it be shorter than 15 minutes because this is where your, this is where your risk becomes higher. There would be direct physical contact with the confirmed case. Ito naman ang direct physical contact is, it's not face to face, but yes, there was some contact. Um, uh, even if, uh, because even if you talk to him na hindi face to face, but there would also be less than uh, one meter, then that is already considered direct physical contact. And in the healthcare, direct care, it's not the case, a direct care for a patient with a probable or confirmed COVID-19 disease without using any PPE. Next, please. So these are all risks. These are all exposure and the risk is high. Now, if you have a travel history or a symptom, you are not allowed to physically return to work and you should consult with the primary care provider. If you are previously symptomatic within the last 14 days prior to return to work, there should be certificates that should be presented on a quarantine completion. Because you did have some symptoms, it may not be COVID-19, but you still need that clearance. And if um, there, there are no symptoms, no travel history, you are cleared to return to work. Next, please. On testing of asymptomatic workers. It is really optional. That's why we said companies may. There is really no good test for any asymptomatic worker. However, what this, uh, the guidelines say, you can do it. If you want to do it, you might want to do it to a representative sample of workers. You may not want to do it to the whole. If you're talking of thousands of workers, you might see uh, what is your best sample size. Then you would like, you might want to have to do it there. And, uh, or you could also lo look at workers who are high risk of contracting COVID-19. The kaya healthcare workers, if you look at the DOH expanded test um, uh, protocols, they will always look at the healthcare workers as one of those they will always regularly test for. And the goal of the RT-PCR is the, is, the, is the gold standard. So that is the test that is always going to be um, uh, utilized if you, if, we would like to look for asymptomatic transmitters because it's really what you know we're trying to find sino ho ang may virus sa katawan and that is only going to be seen in the rt pcr or the swab test so if there is any positives isolate refer to a, for appropriate management and isolate co close contacts so iko quarantine na po yon and then if they becomes negative, return to work. Or for the negatives, return to work with usual precautions. The preventive measure should be there. If symptoms develop later on, the worker shall be tested and close contacts shall be isolated. Next, please. Okay, the reporting. There, I mentioned earlier, there is to the DOLE, but there is also to the DOH. And it is going to be in accordance with the AO the following AOs of the DOH, you still have, or we will also be reporting naman to the DOH, but you should also be reporting to the DOH because COVID-19 is a reportable and notifiable disease. Next, please. Oh, these are just enough for the rapid test. Okay, but before that, the cost of the test, the DOH says it, we said it, all the tests should be um, borne by the employer. There are tests that, are, that will be covered by the field, especially if you're sick already. Feel health na po lahat yan, maski pa ulit ulit. That will be borne shouldered by the field health. Um, now, if you're going to use a rapid antibody test, what the, what the protocol is saying is, please repeat it every 14 days. Because nga, um, your, this test is, uh, has carries many false negatives, even false positives. And it is best that it is interpreted. I will not really go into further interpretation because it's best interpreted by a physician. Next, please. Next, please. Okay. So that ends my presentation. So uh, again, thank you for inviting us.
if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, ASEC, Dr. Tess Kokweko. Uh, we are now opening the room for questions and clarifications, although may mga nag-chat na uh, ASEC. Quick, uh, okay. <laughs> abang tinitingnan natin sino yung nagre-raise ng hand. Uh, may tanong ko rito, ASEC. Is the Data Privacy Act being suspended in as far as the COVID questionnaire is concerned? Or is there a suggested policy on keeping the data on the questionnaire? The data is really just for the question. It's just really a screening. Because anything following that, it's really data privacy, you know. But this is just to screen. And again, it's just going to help. So that's why it's very general. May naramdaman ka ba? Kung may naramdaman ka, may assess ka naman eh. Now, if, you're because, if you will be a COVID positive, that there is really data privacy there. That is a disease already. And confidentiality has to be uh, um, ano yan, observed fully. Okay. So thank you, Asek. Uh, Follow-up question uh, relate, related to the COVID test. Uh, if ever, uh, nakita dun sa questionnaire, may mga symptoms, tapos nagpa-COVID test, binigyan daw ng another 14 days na quarantine period, eh wala na siyang sick leave. Pwede raw ba tong i-charge sa SSS? Ah, yung uh, SSS. Pero sickness benefit pa rin to. May, ewan ko, um, uh, you know, the thing now is that the... We, we also do not meet as much with our social partners. Uh, I remember with the maternity leave law, we were meeting with SSS so frequently. But this one where it would also be very good. But it's still, I know, I, mean, I don't think the SSS has a COVID disease or a COVID. Uh, and that's why you will still use the sickness benefit. And because it is a sickness benefit, uh, medyo ano ta the VLSL, but that's why ang sinasabi ng both the OH and the, the, the guidelines is actually we had earlier guidelines if you go back to the when COVID first appeared. Meron na kaming hinihingi na maybe if you, your workers and the employers can work out a compassionate leave, yung bang quarantine leave. Wang, and, and the secretary already has said this. Kung mapilitan sa quarantine, wag niyo nang tanggalin yung VL at SL. Hindi naman niya kagustuhan yan. But so that it is an agreement and enforced by the companies with an agreement from the workers, we would like them to work on that. But is anything written now? Well, wala pa. Wala okay. po. Uh, okay po. May... Questions from the floor? Bago ko libasahin yung ilang mga lumutang na, lumutang na questions. Mag-raise lang ng hands, ha? Oh, meron hong tanong dito, ASEC. Oo. Uh -oh. uh, work accident and illness report na binanggit na sa protocols. Opo. Uh, saan daw po ba ito isasubmit? Sa regional office, kasi online so, na po yan eh. Pag nasubmit, okay. ibato nyo sa regional office, ECC nyo na lang po ang BWC. Mm -hmm. So, mas uh, sa Dole Regional Office. So, kung opo, kayo po opo, opo. kalookan, sa, na, sa, sa NCR, ma'am. Uh, NCR, NCR. Yes, Or kung, may, kung ang field office ay tatanggap na rin nun, pwede rin naman. Mm -hmm. kasi it's really online. And they can submit there. Anyway, they will. Isisi nyo na lang po kami. Okay. Okay, uh, please raise your hand para makita ko namin yung mga magtatanong habang sinecheck ko namin yung mga initial Happy questions. Happy Independence Day nga pala. Nakalimutan ko kayong batiin. I wanted to. Sige po. I wanted to greet everyone po. Happy Independence Day. <laughs> yes, yes, Manapatrabaho kayo, Independence Day. Pasensya na po, ah. <laughs> Ang choice ko okay. nun ay weekend, weekend. Weekend trabaho. Okay. Uh, 
May follow-up question po ulit sa data privacy concern. Apo. While it is for screening, and if a contract tracing will be made after the person has visited the co-op office, is there uh -huh. a suggestion period of keeping the data on the COVID screening form? Uh, kasi yung screening lang naman po yan is really for that day na na-screen out siya, di ba? He will not mm -hmm. be allowed, but then it does not give you anything on may sakit nga ba siya? Ano ho ba? But if suddenly he will get sick and pumunta sa opisina nyo, mm -hmm. you, that is a way of doing a contact trace. Kasi sino ho ang naging kausap niya nung pumasok sa inyo? And this is not a pri this is now looking at and if you see uh, what is required in terms of data privacy for those for the positives kasi ang dami naging issue ko dito and yes it is true even um, the issues of discrimination violence among health those who were doing frontline services that happened that's why we were they were very careful with how they will treat the the you know the identity of the positives it will be only used for contact tracing kasi babantayan naman ho din nila yung mga nakasama at baka magkasakit. Yun lang. That is up to the extent. Otherwise, that is now the protocol when they started and going to you because you have been identified as a contact. Now, from your end, tapos na ho yan. Dapat wala na. Okay. Hello. Follow-up question lang. Oh, sige po. po. Si Marlene ang CEO po ng Religious Development Cooperative. Asek. Opo. Eh, klaro ko lang po. Kasi, alimbawa, may company sick leave, vacation leave kami. During ko ECQ, nagamit na yun ng mga empleyado. Para so, mabayaran po. No. po paano, nagpa-test kami, uh -huh. meron ulit ng another 14 days. So, okay na yun. Sinagot pa rin namin. Medyo Opo. mabigat lang sa bulsa, may isa pang nag-positive another 14 days. So, siyempre, da, yung nakapositive na yon naghanap pa, nag-contact tracing pa ng ilang mga empleyado. So, pinatest uli namin yon another 14 days. So, siyempre, dumudugo na ho yung, ano, yung sa employer side kasi babayaran mo ng babayaran yung mga empleyado na samantalang mahina ang negosyo. Kaya yun po sana ang suggestion namin na baka tulungan kami ng SSS kasi nahihirapan na ho kami kasi hindi mo naman matanggal yung mga empleyadong nasa uh, quarantine period. Diba? Parang yun po sana yung idinadaing namin. Uh, so po, pwede ko natin ano, pero anong... Tingnan mo natin, uh, have you tried talking to the SSS about this? Kasi hindi ho, yun na nga ho, um, wala na ho kaming regular na. Hindi daw po pa kasi pag asymptomatic, kailangan makumpine. Pero kung asymptomatic naman siya, tinabi pa rin siya eh. Ma'am, ano ho bang ano, test ang ginamit nyo? Rapid? Hindi, uh, swab, swab ho. Opo. Swab na po ito, lahat swab po ito ha? Opo. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh, <laughs> so, yun po, kasi nag-question ako, another 14 days. Talaga ko hindi nyo, oo. Kasi imas kaya simptomati, naman talaga siya papapasukin kasi positive siya sa swab. <laughs> hindi ko. Oh, po, eh. Pero oh. baka yun yung isang ano, napag-usapan ng sa SSS. Kasi medyo mabigat sa amin, although cooperative kami. Pero syempre, pag wala kang collection, wala ka rin pambayad. Tuloy-tuloy na ano. Um... Pag-usapan ho namin din yan, i-raise ko ho to, kasi ngayon ko lang ho narinig din ito na of course yung um, na natuloy-tuloy-tuloy para kasi pero hindi, ito naman yung mga ibang na contact trace na, di ba? Yung uh, the next set of employees na naging positive tapos may naging positive pa ulit. Opo, may isang set kasi kami, alam mo, sampo, pinatest namin. Hmm. Yung isa lang doon, yung naging positive. So ngayon, yung isa doon, Trinase pa natin oh. uh, na ano. Contact Tapos, siyempre, ililib mo uli yung, port, yung tatlo yes. na yun. Oo. Uh, Tapos, pinuntahan po ng 
uh, barangay, sabi, pupuntahan ng DOH. So, na, lampas na ho yung 14 plus 14, 24 days, wala pa ang DOH eh. So, mag- Ayun na. Uh, pero, eh, hindi nyo ho pa ba, eh, no? Hindi nyo ba pinatest na? Kasi magbabuti na nyo ako, ha? Magtitest eh. Ha? Sila pupunta sa quarantine. Kasi, na. kasi ganito ho, magbabago ho ang DOH. Titan ko lang kung ano, kasi parang, Ang, ang taga-DOH na rin ho nagsabi o yung consultant nila na the latest studies, uh, they don't have to anymore have that negative test kasi um, if you already finished the 14 days na wala naman, parang okay na ha, pero this talking of discharge from a hospital. Pero most like, uh, that's why, at saka yung sinasabi din ng Singapore, and I have read that, after 11 days, non-infectious na. So I'm just waiting for the uh, let's let's see if the DOH will come up with a policy so that it's going to be less difficult yung 14 plus 14 sa isang tao lang yon hindi na ho dapat mangyari yon eh kasi bag, nagbago na rin ang siyensya at napapakita nga ho na hindi na infectious and after 14 days pwede na hong bumalik Sige po. So, pabalikin ko na siya ngayon. <laughs> De, wag mo na. Atang mo na. Antayin natin yung policy. <laughs> Galing din ho sa DOH lahat ng mga dapat na policy. Lalo na ho ito. Hindi ho to talaga, I cannot, the dole cannot stand on this policy. Kasi ang siyensya ko at yung health, yung health pa, ano, it's really with the DOH. I, we can ask. Yan na lang ang gagawin ko po. I will ask if there's any recent policy for this para mag-guide din po kayo. Okay, thank you po. Asek, uh, babalikan po namin kay Jan uh, sa mga susunod na araw. Regarding Pwede sa... Pwede ng DOH, Chair Edward. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, re- re- related to the question, uh, again, dun sa testing, meron, uh, alam naman po natin ng DOH ay may mga priorities. Yeah. So, meron po bang mga private sector testing centers na accredited ng DOH at saan po ba ito makikita kung sakali man na accredited? Kasi di ba kung sa gusto magpa uh, RT-PCR test ng employer, yung cooperative employer, eh hindi yung sila pipila dun sa DOH. mag po sila ng private sector. Saan daw po ba pwedeng makakita nito? Alam ko ho, sinasabi nga may 42 accredited laboratories na ang DOH. Nationwide na po yan. And uh, yung gene expert, they have like 12 Kasi that's the same. It will give you it's like an RT-PCR type of test. So, uh, tingnan nyo na lang po sa website kasi they will have all those accredited laboratories of the, na, na in-accredit na po nila to do the uh, RT-PCR or the gene expert. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, ito for, for women concerns, ma'am, relative to work from home policy. Uh, kahit daw po gustong pumasok nung buntes, Eh, i-allow po ba siya? Can pregnant employees volunteer to report for work? O uh, mag-work na lang siya sa bahay kung ang kanya naman trabaho ay... Pwede pre- work from home. Work from home. Oo, sa amin naman, really for to protect you and your... and your... the, 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 uh, the child uh, in your home, it's really best kasi... If you're going to work every day and you will have contacts with people you do not know and narinig na raman ho natin na may nagtatanong, paano ko kaya nang they do, in, you really don't know. They're the asymptomatics or pre-symptomatics that they would say. Just work from home if, you're, if your work naman can be done and your company has allowed you and that there should really be no diminution of benefits, then please work from home. It's, it's safer. It's healthier. Okay po. So, um, sa nagpadala po ng tanong na yan, please take note of it. No? Uh, mula sa sagot ni ASEC Tess. Uh, meron ho ring dagdag na katanungan, ASEC, para sa uh, uh, mental and emotional resilience of employees during this time of crisis. Uh, Ano po ito? Ano? Paano po ito mapro-provide ng employer? Alam nyo, just before COVID, nung February, 
the secretary of the Dole, Secretary Bellio, issued a department order on the mental health program for the workplace. You should look at that. Kasi hindi na lang namin na promote as much kasi pumasok na po ang COVID. But it is there that the companies should be, actually it talks of capacitating HR, it talks of uh, the referral system, it talks of how to handle employees, the duties of the employers, the duties of the workers. And I think this was also discussed with the tripartite. The secretary signed it last February. But really, um, unfortunately, because of the COVID events, we were not able to let this fully take off. But then, please review it. I, it's department order. Pati yan, nakalimutan ko na. lang, Dole, mental health program. But uh, that's why, it's, but it's so hard also to say, na, nakapacitate na ho ba namin ang mga ang HR because that is part of that mental health program so that they can be able to respond. Uh, what we, what, but you know, you see in our website now, referral systems, because this is the best we can do for now, but I know we're taking up the other mental health um, concerns now that we're also starting to um, return to the what are the essential programs for the workplace? But if you visit the BWC website, may mga referrals po doon for mental health. Okay, so take note po yung website na binanggit ni ASEC TES, yung Bureau of Working Condition. www.bwc.dole.gov.ph uh, Okay, and then also check for the uh, department order regarding mental health program. Meron po niyan, i-google na lang po natin at makikita po natin. Uh, Asek, meron po ulit tanong dito. Patungkol dun sa work illnesses report monthly. Ito Apo. po online na ipapasa o ipapa-LBC raw po sa office? Eh, 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 online na po yan. Okay na po, online, online na. na po. Online na po. <laughs> Parang natakot ka, Asek. <laughs> <laughs> okay, online po submission. Uh, okay, any... Pwede yung mag-questions or mag-clarify habang binabasa po natin yung mga online questions po dito. Yes? Anyone? Hello? Opo? Pwede po magtanong? Sure. P pwede mong pakilala at cooperative? Yeah, yeah. Okay. From KKK Multipurpose Cooperative, Labor Service po kami. Okay po, thank you. Uh, okay. Kasi po, uh, halimbawa po yung uh, sa isang barangay po ng tao namin po sa siya naninirahan, eh meron po nag-positive sa barangay nila. Ano uh -huh. ba dapat namin required? Kasi halimbawa po sa barangay nila may nag-positive na do sa area nila may nag-positive. Eh ngayon ho, yung mga tao namin, di na... Hindi po, uh, may mga tao po ako doon na naka-assign, hindi po nila pinalabas. So, for safety reason mo daw, kasi nga doon sa area yun, so barangay na yun ay may nag-positive. So, sabi ko sa kanila, tama ko ba yung ginawa ko, sir? Uh, o sabi ko, since ayaw naman kayo palabas, since sabi ko dahil nga doon sa area yun may nag-positive, eh siguro, uh, di ba meron tayo yung self-quarantine po na... Opo. Mm. Opo. Uh -huh. Self-quarantine <coughs> Days. And then after that 14 days, sabi ko, kumuha kayo ng tama ko ba yung gagawin ko? Yes, sa apo. Certificate. Certificate City, uh -huh. City Health Department. Yung, uh -huh. tayo, bago kayo pumasok na, cleared kayo dun sa ganun na cases na virus. Kailangan. Kasi yun ang hanapin namin parang medical certificate nyo, na cleared kayo dun sa virus na yun. Tama ko ba yung gano'n na gagawin namin? Uh -huh. Alam ko, ganun nga ho ginagawa, especially yung mga pinahome quarantine or nag-lockdown sa isang area, hindi barangay, pero kasi yung may, may specific area na medyo mataas ang cases. Okay. Although alam na po nila kung sino yung mga positives at okay. nag-contact trace na. So, yun ho yung mga babantay at yun yung mga itetest. Ano? Hindi naman ho kaya nilang gawin na lahat. So, pero yung mga nag-quarantine doon at, at asymptomatic at natapos ang 14 days, okay. usually bibigyan naman ho nila ng certificate. Tama po yun. So, yun tama po pala yung ginawa namin. Opo, opo. Yes po. So, bago sila mag-proceed to work, kailangan na uh, tapusin na rin yung basis date. Uh, Oho. So, uh, alam niyo ako kung kaya niyo ipa-work from home? 
Kasi mm-hmm. okay naman po, na, nagkataon lang ho talaga na talagang ni-lockdown ho sila. At ganun okay. naman ho ang, ang ano na ngayon, eh, ang abiso. Kasi especially yung areas na mataas ang incident, talagang ila-lockdown ho nila yan. Paka mm-hmm. pwede niya naman, eh, bigyan niya ng aside. Work from home ba? Mm-hmm. Unless, okay naman sa inyong hindi siya mag-work from home, pero tuloy-tuloy ho ang wage. Nakos, <laughs> hindi na nga ho kami nga ma'am nakakuha. Hindi na nga ho kami nga ma'am nakakuha ng ayuda sa AMP tapos hindi wala rin mo sa SSS sa PS ano sa PSTWS. Wala ho kami ayuda na nakuha doon ma'am. Kaya medyo mal, ma, medyo may sentiment rin ho kami ng konti although uh, compliance naman po kami lahat sa DOLE, sa SSS. Compliance po. Sabi ko I mean, sabi ko sa mga tao Eh sabi ko, ito po ang katunayan na binigay ng DOLE na hindi tayo po naka-omodate, hindi rin tayo naka-omodate sa SBW. So nag-apply naman tayo, kako. Kaya lang, siyempre, kako, yung sabi Opo. nila, limited Opo. lang yung yes. process nila. Opo. So sabi ko, ito na siguro yung proof na pwede ko sabihin sa inyo, pero nag-apply tayo, kako. Opo. Kaya lang, sabi ko, hindi naman nakakapagtaka kasi hindi Opo. lang naman tayo hindi nabigyan, kako. <laughs> pero, ma'am, bakit po ganon? Mm-hmm. Bakit po ganon? Ano? <laughs> nako sabi ko may hirap ata sagot din ito na lang makakasagot sabi ko yung mga sulat na na-receive natin kako ito na lang siguro kako pero sa ganun lang po ma'am maraming salamat po at at least nakasama po ako pasensya na hindi ko rin ako okay. no? kung Ayan. repera lang mo talaga talagang tako tako talagang tumutugo din ng dibdib namin pero opo ako po eh. ay papaano po sa kooperatiba naman po namin so Nagbigay naman po yung kaya ng kooperatiba lang po sa mga aming membro sa sa aming mga empleyado. Para okay. pang suporta lang naman po Sige sa po. mga ayuda binigay ng <laughs> ating gobyerno. Salamat po sir. Maraming salamat po. Ulit. God bless po. Uh, quick quick response lang doon ano Asectes uh, sa meeting with Congressman Ben Kanama at may invited na dole official regarding sa dole camp. So it explain na uh, meron pa talaga mga applicants ng Dole Camp. However, yung budget na naalat sa yeah. Dole Camp ay kapos. Kaya yes. yung Congress is trying to uh, push for another round at saka budget augmentation para sa Dole. So hopefully po doon sa uh, Arise Bill na pumasa na ako sa third reading sa Congress, eh meron hong bagong nadagdag na pondo, pero ito naman ay para sa doll to pad. So, patungkol dun sa doll camp, talagang ipinasa na nila dun sa aid subsidy. Uh, para na lang siguro natin yung, in, uh, yung concern ni Ma'am Mayet, uh, once na nagkaroon ng pag-uusap ulit sa uh, assistance na yon. Okay, meron pa hong mga tanong na lumutang dito sa chat group, ASEC. Eh, may kinalaman daw po ito sa face-to-face meeting. Kanina binanggit nyo, Apo. Uh, dapat yung face-to-face meeting ay hindi ganun katagal. Palimbawa, inalaw daw po yun ng isang organization at uh, tumagal yung face-to-face, lalo na mga senior officers pa yung nagmi-meeting. Meron daw po bang penalty? Huwag mo muna penalty, pakiusap na lang ho muna, pakisabi yung risk, kumbinsin ho. Kasi sa totoo lang, kung makita mo rin ho sa gobyerno, yung mga matatanda, tagal-tagal talaga. Pero, really, and, pero kung ganun ho katagal, i-open na lang ho na Zoom. Pwede, ipa, an, ano yun, ganito na lang ho, ang ano ninyo. Sige ho, pero hopefully, oh, nakamask naman po kayo. So, uh, ang next ho, sabi niya na mag-Zoom na lang ho tayo kung hindi naman natin makontrol. Ganun naman din ho ang... Ma- ma- maayos din naman ang Zoom. You know, um, really, uh, the meetings of many government offices now are b- via Zoom. And it the actions are done. So, yun na lang. Let's encourage. And I mean, highly encourage that they do the Zoom if it's going to be, or any other. Ha? Hindi ho ako... Pro- marami ho pala to. And I, I get to realize there are so many platforms. But use that. Tell, ano yun, use technology for this. Um, and yung, ang mahirap nga din dyan, so, uh, the, uh, it's not just the physical presence, but then afterwards, yung pag-uwi ng mga tao, mahihirapan din ho eh. So, please highly encourage na lang the use of Zoom. 
Sa kongreso nga ako ngayon, di ba, uh, Ka Edwin, uh, I think Zoom is one of the platforms they are using now. Yes, yes po. Okay po. Uh, another, in, re in relation to the previous question, ma'am, uh, from ma'am May, my, yung pong uh, kapatid po niya is senior citizen, pero nire-require oh. na pasok sa trabaho. Kasi limited lang daw yung mga supervisor sa office at yung presensya niya ay kailangan. Five days a week po yung kanyang trabaho. So, uh, allowed po ba yun? Kahit na doon sa guidelines ay hanggat maaari yung mga senior citizens ay... Uh, uh, yeah, I know, work from home. Kasi, you know, and I look at myself. <laughs> Kasi, ganito ho, it's true. I mean, and I... Um, I also read from the chat, government employee siya. The civil service has allowed. And then yung ano, yung even the civil service, if they have to report for work, ang sabi nga ng civil service, not hold eight hours. They can, kasi if there's important things, edi two hours lang. Then let him do work from home. Can he bargain with that? I mean, it's really, you know, the times are not, the, and he is, he has been identified he, you know, he. Um, I don't think they should. Uh, they should go to the civil service to ask this because it's already very clear. Blended up, you can use all types so that they, they, uh, if they need that, stay for the minimum, go home, continue work. I so um, in negotiate na lang po niya with his bosses because he is a senior citizen and he, um, why are they? Like, why am I, I, I know that if I'm going to get sick, which I really do, like COVID, it is, we do not like that we go into that severe and critical because that is the most dangerous. And that is what we are avoiding. And that is also true for those with comorbidities. Okay. So, klaro po yun, ha? Dun sa mamay. Oh. Uh, Follow-up question po. Sa isang lugar, uh, sa isang city, ASEC, Oo. ay nilakasin yung buong barangay. Nasa guidelines daw ng barangay na pwedeng pumasok basta empleyado. Kaya po pinapasok yung mga, kaya pinapayagang pumasok yung mga empleyado. Uh, so, may, may barangay lockdown, pero ang mga empleyado pinapayagang pumasok. So, meron ho bang penalty? kung ang barangay la ay, ay naka-lockdown tapos hindi ho siya nakapasok sa trabaho because of the barangay lockdown. Kung makapasok man siya, eh, ibang usapan po yun. Pero kung hindi po siya makapasok dahil lockdown, may penalty ho ba yun sa employer? Uh, teka muna, let's ano ha. Yung barangay niya naka-lockdown pero pumapayag ang barangay na pwede siyang lumabas dahil for work. Yes. That, oh. So si maski naka-lockdown, pwede siyang pumasok. Pero yes. sino yung bakit di siya pumapasok ngayon? Kasi hindi pumapasok naman po, pero dahil nga naka-lockdown, kung kung sakali ininterpret ko yung tanong, ah uh, paano kung hindi siya pumasok? Eh Ma pinapayagan, yes, alam mo, walang dahilan kasi pinayagan naman siyang pumasok. Mm. It's hard. It's so I mean I cannot ano Kung ang barangay niya hindi nagpapasok sa kanya, and then he can use it to the employer. But because he's, the barangay says, okay lang yung mga papasok, pwedeng lumabas, uh, hindi, he, he cannot use that excuse, eh, that reason for the for not going to work. So kung may agam-agam siya, you know, that's why we're, we set these policies. Kasi really, the question is, how safe is my work? That is always... And we hear that question, so how safe am I? It's really hard to answer, but then what we're saying is, kung ginawa naman ng employer lahat, kung lahat ng ano, sinundan niya yung mga guidelines, yung, uh, yung disinfection, pagpasok, at um, pinapayagan pa ko yung lesser ang work hours, you have to... Uh, um, always think that that is already and now it's up to you on protecting yourself. So, 
it's it's really a no. But you have to overcome certain fears. And if people naman around you are asymptomatic, ang sabi nga nila, even if you're a carrier, but you're asymptomatic, there, the ano is not the chance, and you're, all the barriers are there, and you're very careful, your risk for, ex, for being infected is going to be low. I'm not saying it's not there. I'm saying that the risk will be low. Okay po. We would like to recognize ma'am, uh, si Sir Richard. Uh, gusto mo magtanong? Sige po. Sir Richard, paki-unmute na lang. Richard Encarnacion. Sir, are you there? Ano wala? Okay na. Uh, Ma'am, yun yung follow-up question. So, naka-lockdown naka yung barangay. Pero yung mga imposto pala, coming from the outside, napapasok dun sa barangay. Inaalaw nila. So, uh, but, eh, inaalaw ng barangay na may tagalabas na pumasok. Yes, kahit naka-lockdown. Uh, may problema yun. May Kasi problema. Kasi alam ko, indeed, it's strict. Pag sinabing lockdown, and, and uh, we're trying to avoid barangay-wide. What we're saying is certain areas lang yung kung saan ang mga kaso. So, kung yan ang lockdown, talagang lockdown. In and out is going to be contained. So, yung pumapayag, medyo baka gusto nilang i... i <laughs> bigyan ng konting ano. I-remind si barangay or say... or ask other officials to look into this because it's not supposed to be allowed. Okay po. So, klaro po yun na, ma'am. Uh, another question po. Uh, Siyempre po, dahil lumuwag na, ma'am, general community quarantine na tayo, uh, may mga areas na hindi na hinahanapan ng mga quarantine passes. Opo. Oo. Uh, at this point to ba, May mga atakaram pa rin na you can report for work basta meron kang certification coming from your employer, may ID ka, or yung co-op mismo can issue a quarantine pass uh, equivalent to employer's certification to that effect para ho makapagtrabaho yung mga uh, empleyado ng cooperative pag hinahanapan ng barangay officials. Kasi ang alam ko ho, company ID, certificate of employment, pwede na yun. Uh, you don't really need that quarantine. Kasi ang quarantine pass, ang alam ko, nagbibigay niyan ay yung barangay. Eh. That you are allowed to go out of the barangay, especially. But then, for if you're going to work, and if you have to pass through checkpoints, the company ID, the certificate of employment is good enough for the general community quarantine. Okay pa. Alright. Uh, meron pa bang tanong kay ASEC? May meeting pa ako. <laughs> <laughs> ASEC, uh, can you further explain yung no work, no policy? May dito ah. kasi lang question uh, ng mga participants. May binanggit ko rito eh. Yung ah, okay. work, no policy. No work, yung, no pay. Yung hazard pay, including. Ah! Okay, tapusin natin ang hazard pay. Really, I cannot do anything. Um, the hazard pay that has been um, uh, published and enforced is for government. I'm really, I have to be very honest. I know it's a no. But you know, Secretary Bellio was trying to push for this for the private sector. Pero ang tanong nga, sino will government provide for the private sector? But you know, i hirap na nga din. If the employers can provide, that is fine. But if not, that is going to be difficult. Um, uh, for the private sector, the best thing, I mean, of course, it's not the best thing, but uh, that the government has extended financial assistance sa mga healthcare workers, even if they're in the private sector, yung mga namatayan po at saka yung naging severely ill, binayaran ho nila yan. Even if they were the private, if they're from the private sector, 
Pero pasensya na po yung hazard pay. I really have nothing yet on that for the private sector because they are trying to find the funds. Um, but if employers can, again, like I said, that would be good. Now, on the no work, no pay, I think you are familiar with Labor Advisory 17, the flexible working arrangements that, you know, much as these are really difficult times. COVID is already a very difficult problem. Birmo, walang, walang lunas, walang vaccine. Lahat tayo natatakot. Tapos, hindi pa nga ho, ang daming kumpanya ang nagsara or are on the brink. Or, and what we're saying is, let us preserve employment. So, uh, to preserve employment, we are trying to look at many schemes na may tutuloy pa. Kaya nyo pa. Tutulong. I mean, the best way is that we can help you through policies like uh, reduced working hours. You will have, ang, ang base namin doon on reduced working hours would be your minimum wage. But then, because your hours are reduced, the hours of work. But then it will allow that another set of em your co-workers ay mag-work for another set at naman may matanggap din siya. Again, your uh, not to reduce would be minimum. We're not talking of lesser than the minimum po, ha? Now, there might be staggered work. And that is where three times a day ka na lang, ikaw naman i three times a day para maging six, yung six working days. But then you're looking at two sets of employees para at least makaano lang. And the three days, yun yung babayaran sa kanya, hindi work. Yung wala siyang trabaho, yun yung no work, no pay. I know, I know, <laughs> for the youth, this is, but then we are really trying to preserve employment the best way we can. Uh, we are not going to touch minimum wage is minimum wage that is going to be the basis for the computation of things that will follow. But um, we just hope and pray this will end, the COVID-19 will end, and we can start really picking up. Uh, and yun, yun lang po ang masasabi ko. That is the basis for the work no pay, the reduced working hours. But please, uh, we are ano here is that we our basis will be from the minimum wage. Yes, thank you, Asek. Asek, ito medyo kailangan po masagot ninyo. Uh, from Rufo po, uh, taga Pangasinan ito. In our case, we are working outside ng province, particularly po Pangasinan, na may cases po ng COVID. Pag uwi po namin ng Ilocos, eh, pinarantin po kami. Ano po ba ang pwede nating gawin para pag-uwi po namin sa Ilocos ay hindi na rin po sila ikwa-quarantine? Kasi two days lang naman po sila sa Ilocos tapos babalik ulit sila sa Pangasinan. Mahigit isang buwan na po kasi sila sa Pangasinan. Uh, parang, parang yung pagpunta lang nila sa isang area ma'am na Pangasinan, hindi po sila makakalabas doon hanggat hindi sila nakakwarantine. So, sa paglabas pa lang ng Pangasinan o sa pagpasok sa Ilocos? Oh, kasi taga ano sila eh. Taga kasi, Ilocos, di ba? Sila sa Ilocos, so babalik ko sila sa Pangasinan, ikaw-quarantine sila. Yeah. So, yung 14 days song yun, eh ma mahaba po yun. Wow. Then lalabas sila, then ikaw-quarantine na naman sila. So, ang kanilang trabaho, uh, narinig ko na tong kwentong to, ang kanilang trabaho, dalawang araw lamang, tapos 14 days na quarantine. Uh, Sa so, ganyang system mo ba ay hindi talaga siya pwedeng makorek because of the policy ng government, LGU? Yes, the, these are LGU. You know, we have to understand. Marami nagtanong yan, pati nga si OFW eh. Yung, <laughs> that is the same. I mean, and not really, but it's almost very similar to Quarantine na ako dito. Pagdating ko doon, quarantine ulit. Edo 28 days na. Tapos narinig ko late sa news. Pati sa barangay, isa pang 14 days. Pero, ang tag but ano, you have to understand, and this was explained to us by a local government, na they really, especially, Ilocos yata has very few cases. Really very few. And they would like to maintain it. Kasi, syempre, para sa kanila in their region, that is also a way of opening up, opening the economy, being, you know, the productivity is ensured in that region, Pangasinan has higher cases. And that is yeah. why if I am, you know, bago ka bumalik sa akin, ay teka muna, pasensya na ha, pero bantay-bantay lang, for everybody's good naman ito. So, that is, ano, these are really LGU rules 
but we have to understand they're also taking care of their region. Um, that's why, like I said, we hope really this whole thing ends because it's very hard. And LGUs are, diba, ito nga yung batikos ng gobyerno from nung nagpa ang OWA, parang sina, yung nagalit ang mga LGU, di man lang sa inabisuan, hindi, kasi they are really trying to really have that COVID-free or very, ano, na mat-contact trace nila at ma-contain. So, ang ano ko doon, wala ba ho talaga sila pwede makuna lang sa Pangasinan nung gumawa ng trabaho? Para wala nang, you know, wala nang ganun na travel. Get an employee or from Pangasinan, let him do that work, train him for that. And then yung sa Ilocos, Ilocos na siya. And let him do the work in Ilocos. Wala nang lipat. Talagang mahihirapan po. Believe me, mahihirapan po yan. Yes, so po yun, no? Asek, uh, ito, kailangan niyo po masagot eh. We, we have ko, kailangan ko sagot eh. At least 10 more minutes bago natin mapakawalan siya. Uh, meron pong question dito, what if the employee insists, actually dalawa ko yung nagtanong, what if the employee insists to work from home because she is immunocompromised but the nature of his or her position does not permit her or him and it's not applicable for the current or her current position, his or her current position or function. This is where sometimes we really would like employers and employees to really have a bit, you know, to understand each other. Ang immunocompromised talagang isa rin yan ho na yung resistensya niya uh, on a default is bad. So she cannot really, may, may, may hirap, mahirap na kong lumaban sa, sa sakit. Eh lalo na itong COVID-19. Okay, uh, nandun na ako tayo here work. Like for example, nasa makinarya. Pero baka naman ma-reskill ma siya para makagawa ng work from home. Um, it's really thinking out of the box. But you know, employers might look at, oh ito pala pwede yung gawa natin dito. Let, them, let, let employers now um, look at how best they can still help their employees, especially the older ones, the immunocompromised ones, so that they can still be productive. We're really asking for compassion at this time and for everybody to think out of the box so that, ano, baka naman yung sinasabing kasi, oh, yes, yung pagtatrabaho sa isang makinari, that is really going to be difficult. But then, if magawa naman niya na pwede na siya mag-administrative, pwede na niyang gawin ng pantulong sa HR, why not? Please explore na lang po. That is what we are really asking employers to look at. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Asek, uh, dagdag hong tanong. Uh, meron, meron nung kasi kayong binanggit kanina na dapat merong safety officer uh, na nag-monitor uh, ng uh, mga no. employees relative to the check uh, na binibigay nila. Eh, paano po, lalo na yung mga cooperatives na maliit lang yung bilang ng kanilang empleyado, siyempre, wala ko silang nurse. Uh, or oh, oh. silang safety committee uh, walang safety officer. So, ano pong pwede nyo i-advise sa mga cooperatives na uh, sa ganitong sitwasyon ng COVID-19, importante na merong uh, nakatalagang tao para doon sa pag-comply, no? doon sa guidelines, at the same time, ma-monitor po yung premises na free from COVID-19 or at least ma-prevent yung premises, uh, Asek? Alam nyo, dapat pa rin naman ho tayo sumunod sa, yung, the Oslo and the IRR has always been there. Maski maliit ho kayo, yung na may safety officer, 8 hours training lang ho yan. Medyo, I hope, I, and sinabi naman namin, uh, and I think many, many safety training organizations, accredited ha ng dole, are already doing an eight-hour online. 
Yan naman ho ay sa mga maliliit na na kumpanya sa kooperatibang less than ito yung 8 hours I think for less for less than 10 uh, or yung low risk or small. So yun lang ho I'll have that because it will give you an idea yung pinakita ko sa inyo kanina yung hierarchy of controls kung paano yung mga exposure magbibigay no sa inyo ng ideya at tapos magmo-monitor ho kayo ng physical distancing aalamin niyo ho kung bakit ho ito yung mga pamamaraan hindi ho ano um I, if it's online i hope they can also give it to you at you know at your own pace so that hindi kayo um mapupwersa na ay kailangan ko ano tapusin na to but remember it's only 8 hours so please explore i i haven't i i mean i i I have not looked into the accredited and the eight hours, but we were already telling them even before COVID that they should start this online because for those who would like to do online training and who can, they should take it. It's really, alam nyo, hindi ho, um, you know, we cannot say that because of COVID, hindi na ho susunod sa mga batas, susunod pa rin po. Kung hindi nyo, at least for, kung uh, then there's the need for a first aid by the owner, uh, eh, kung, kung mahirapan ho kayo, nandun pa rin naman sa law na pwede kayo kumuha ng safety consultant. Eh, that's another. I mean, I'm just opening uh, mechanisms so that you will still be compliant. And there is somebody to help you while you are training. Ma'am, uh, baka gusto nilang malaman kung sakali magkaroon ng online training, Eh, kanino daw po pwedeng kumuha sa dole? Sa, tinan niyo sa Occupational Safety and Health Center. Alam ko, hmm. ano na rin sila. I, you, please um, explore it. You can ask the OSHC. I think you can email them. You can call them. Uh, please feel free to do that. Okay, so, Engineer yun. Noel Binag. Okay, o, yung Executive Director po ngayon ng OSHC. So, dahil nga po nasa COVID crisis tayo uh, at in-explore natin yung mga online training, I think this is now the uh, ample time para sa mga cooperative so na grab po yung opportunity ng OSH online training, lalo pa kung ang inyong mga cooperative ay wala pa kong safety committee or safety officer. So, baka magandang uh, i-check po ninyo yung website ng Occupational Health and Safety Center. At pwede ko kayo makipag-communicate doon, sabi nga ni ASEC Tesco Cueco. Uh, Ma'am, no, uh, announcement na lang. So marami pong uh, nagte-text, maraming salamat daw. Very informative yung inyong ibinigay na uh, uh, topic ngayon at uh, keep safe. No? Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Rito. Salamat sa PCC at kay ASEC Dr. Cocueco. May nagtanong ko kung government employee kayo. Opo, siya po ay taga <laughs> Department of Labor at uh, empleyado po siya ng uh, gobyerno. Siya po ay Career Executive Service Officer po 3 uh, na naka-assign po sa Bureau of Working Conditions. Siya po ang head at currently ay Assistant Secretary po na binanggit kanina ni Chair Gary. So, meron pa huba before we close the uh, forum or webinar in this uh, DTI DOLD guidelines, interim guidelines. Ah, kaya ako pala interim to, from time to time, pwede ho mabago. Yes, mag-oho. Um, no. I'll always understand pag may bago hong lalabas, kaya nga binaaral na ho namin yung sa testing kasi baka maglabas din ho kami. But uh, optional pa rin. We're not saying, um, kasi ayaw pa rin ho ng DOH yung uh, mandatory mass or uh, because unang una hindi pa talaga makakayanan but uh, um, we will we're also and all the sciences like kanina yung ano ho ba talaga ang next na test kailan ho ba yan we will issue the guidelines as they're also providing us the updates okay as a test uh, thank you then before we close the webinar any parting words po before we close the webinar? Again, salamat po uh, to Chair Edwin, uh, the Labor Sector Representative of NAPSI, 
a chair, chair of Gary. the Philippe, and the chair Gary, because chair, uh, si Edwin po ay chair ng Philippine Cooperatives. Uh, Manager po. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, the labor sector of NAPSI. Um, kasi, ho, parate, he, you know, si, si Ka Edwin ay parate po ho namin na nakakasama sa mga tripartite. Anyway, sa inyong pong lahat, na, talagang um, kung, kung meron ho kayong maitulong sa inyong mga workers, parate niyo hong ibahagi na protectionan. Alam niyo, nakita ho namin na nung paglumuluwag ho, ang mga queue, parang nawawala ho ang COVID. Para parati namin sinasabi, parati niyo ang tandaan, wala, nandyan ho ang COVID. Pwede always remember the mass distancing disinfection. Uh, we have to protect ourselves. We have to take care of ourselves. Uh, and we just pray that all of this will now end. Uh, we will continue to work with you. We will continue to bring you updates. And na, even if not health, we might, if you want us to uh, help you in um, explaining certain policies, then we are also free to, to help you there. Uh, we have been issuing certain guidelines like Labor Advisory 17 on the flexible work arrangement, on uh, the cost of PPEs for the employers. Just feel free to tell us so that we can, again, help um, give, give this, uh, this ongoing conversations with you. Thank you, Asiktes. So, Chair Gary, you have something more to say before we close the webinar? Chair Gary? Uh, Chair Gary, thank you din po. Kasi... Ay, thank you ulit, uh, Asiktes. Uh, sa ulitin, ha? Opo. <laughs> sure. Opo. Anytime po. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, I can't... I, may I leave na po? Please continue. I just need to leave. I have another meeting po. Sure thank you po. Muna, Thank you. Until next time. Can you take a picture? Okay, so, paki, paki, pakita naman po yung ating mga uh, faces. Ayan. Lakas ng ulan. Ang lakas talaga ng ulan. <laughs> Ma malakas ang ulan para malakas ang signal sa office. <laughs> okay, yung, yung po mga picture, uh, mga faces. Alright. Uh, thank you, Asek. Uh, sabi nga ni... Thank you very much po. Go ahead na po. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you po. po. Thank you, Chair Gary. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> o, ipapakita po namin yung certificate na ibibigay po ng PCC. Uh, Ma'am Kat, can we show Ms. G? O. Yan, so yan po yung certificate po na ipapakita po sa inyong email dun po sa mga nagsipagdalo. Sa ilalim po niyan ay may nakasulat na for very Process contact Philippine Cooperative Center. This is a computer-generated certificate. It is valid even without signature. Because at this point, po, siempre hindi po natin mapapapirma uh, yung ating guest speaker. Uh, si Chair Gary naman, pwede anytime kaya lang. Uh, hirap naman po na isa lang yung nakapirma. So sabi ni Dr. Tess, kung maluwag-luwag na rin naman, okay naman daw po niya man ito. So, ito po yung aming uh, babalita. In the meanwhile, ito po ay email sa lahat po na nag-participate uh, dito sa ating webinar. Uh, meron pong walang nag-share uh, sa kanilang Facebook. Uh, so, hindi pa po natin alam yung number of uh, viewers doon sa shares na nasa FB Live. Uh, kanina po ay nasa 50 packs po tayo. Although ang nagpa-register ay uh, 87, mukhang hindi na nakapasok yung iba. Pero nonetheless, uh, yan po yung ating mga participants. So uh, magandang 
Maraming po sa lahat at uh, please be safe. Thank you. Thank you.